I'm on. Okay. The sound and microphone are off. Hi, Jill. Hi. Is Hi. Emma. Hi, Emma. I'm allowing you to start a video, so you oh. should be good to go. And hi, Diane. Hi. How are you? Hello. Hi. I don't see my. I wonder if I should raise my computer. I don't see a picture. My picture. You um, see me? Yeah. Um, you just have to start your video. Okay. Let's see. Which I'm is here. down at the. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, wonderful. Oh, okay. Good. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. I think we, Lisa's here too. I am here. I'm just trying to get my. So I got a, an email from Emma that this was canceled. I guess that was an error. Oh, you know what? She was taking it out of her. She, I'm using her computer and she took it out of her cowl um, in oh. order to, there weren't any notifications or beeps. Okay. Bye. Oh, I, I don't know how to turn my notifications off on my computer. How do I do that? Um, no, that's why I deleted everything. Because <laughs> yeah. I do occasionally get those kinds of I know, I was thinking the same thing, too, with my text messages. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, um, Diane, okay. it's okay. Here we go. Hi, Lisa. Hi, I'm just pouring my tea. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. This is I, I, my, I almost actual... finished my tea. <laughs> Aw, it's so nice to be all together yeah, and see you thank guys. Thank you for doing this. This is I'm wonderful. So I'm awesome to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Elisa, by any chance, are you able... Oh, perfect. The other one went... Um, the other login just went away, so we're good. I'm going to switch okay. up to gallery view. Hey, guys. Great. Um, well, thank you guys for being here. This is more just for a quick kind of internet sound check, um, and for all Very of us. To get, <laughs> yeah, and for us to get to know each other just a little bit before we go on. So, um, I'm Megan, obviously founder of Moxie Made, and so excited that you guys are here tonight, giving um, our community this time on such an important subject. So, thank you so much for your mentorship. Awesome. Yeah, so I would love just, let's all go around and just quickly say hello and we'll make sure everyone's audio is okay. Um, and then I'll give you guys some details for the night. Great. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, I guess I'm starting because <laughs> how does my audio sound? Is it okay? It sounds good. Yeah, it sounds okay. good. And out of all of us, you have the best lighting, Diane. <laughs> oh, really? Well, you know, it's earlier here. It might change over time. You guys are it's gonna laugh. It's daylight. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna laugh at night. my setup. I have my um, light alarm clock, like, facing on my face. <laughs> I have a light behind the computer, but when it gets dark, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, how's it working for you, Jill? Um, everything seems to be fine. How's my audio? It sounds good. Yeah, it sounds good. And then good. how about you, Lisa? Am I good? I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm hooked up pretty good. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're like ready to rock and roll. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, I feel really honored to have you. And also this is a really special moment because I, um, it's our first virtual event and I feel like typically I would not be providing you guys like as much behind the scenes details as um, as I provided but I don't know everyone's familiarity with zoom and I know that I've done like a two-day crash course in in learning all the things so um, so thank you thank you thank you yeah it's it's great that you were so detailed oh thank you so much well um, just a few things I want to go over um, before we get started is um, we'll, when we broadcast, so I think we'll probably wrap up like with this pre-huddle about five minutes, five to ten minutes before we get started so everyone can go to the bathroom or get a glass of water, um, but we'll meet back here at seven 
and then officially start broadcasting around 7.05. So it'll give people a little bit of time to go ahead and like pre-register. Um, and when we open up, we'll be on this view. Um, but throughout the, the night at different portions, I'll be kind of toggling between this active speaker view and then the gallery view. So when we open up, we'll be on this active speaker or this gallery view. And then I'll, um, you know, put it to just focusing on me. So at that point, um, we just ask that you guys turn off your mics, but keep your video on um, throughout, um, throughout the evening um, by keeping the audio off when we're on these like screen, like these focal screenshots, it allows it to not toggle around and just stay on one person. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so also we'll be in this viewpoint when we go into the tutorials so that, you know, when Jill, you kick it off, um, you'll be front and center and then you'll tee up um, Elisa to go forward and then she'll tee up Diane who will tee up me. So we'll kind of be toggling through this. Um, I do expect we'll probably go a little bit over during the panel. So that's, that's completely fine. Um, I'm thinking that the panel and Q&A will end around 8 p.m. instead of 7.50. So just, and then we'll still have that full 20 minutes. So from 8 to 8.20. Um, yeah, so I think we'll still be, we'll be fine on time. It just will be a little bit pushback. Um, for so when I do the guided meditation, you don't have to do me front and center because, you know, I go into the steep state and my eyes are closed. <laughs> so if you want to experiment and do different things, that's fine with me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, and then during Q&A, there's this little functionality at the bottom that says Q&A. Um, that's where all of the attendees will be writing in their questions to us and they will be able to see the questions that other people submitted. Um, so when we get to that portion of the night, you guys can kind of look through with me in real time and just pick out two to three like questions um, we feel like we should answer. But just remember to read out the question because they won't have visibility to which one we're, we're speaking to. Can you say that again? Just say that again. Yeah, of course. So at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a couple of um, different tools and there it goes participants and then the next one's Q&A. Do you guys see it? It, it pulls up and it, uh, it should be at like the bottom of your, your screen. <coughs> to polling and next to the participant. You have to move your cursor a little, Diane. You mean the, are you talking about the chat? The, it might be different on yours, Elisa, because you're I on your I have to phone. go get my glasses, maybe. <laughs> I see, um, <laughs> oh, I see chat. Oh, if I click on that. So it's not- no, Just chat. along from chat, there's Q&A. What's Sorry, that? I do loads of these so No, it's okay, Q&A, okay. Yeah. Okay, and so, that's gonna. So that's the place where I'm gonna direct all of the attendees to submit their questions to us, and only um, only us, like the four, the five of us, will be able to see the questions that they're asking. So when we're going through that portion, just remember if you pick out a question you want to answer, to just read the question out loud so that everyone has familiarity around what we're what the question is. You was. won't be reading the questions and then getting us to answer them. You want us to Well, I, I was thinking during that portion because we only have we'll only be able to answer like two to three questions that if there's, you guys are looking through it with me in real time, if there's something you feel like we haven't covered, that's a really good question. I'm comfortable with you saying, hey guys, this one's really good. So-and-so asked, you know, about X, Y, and Z. I believe blah, 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 you know, and go into it. Okay. Can you just, I'm, I'm not seeing on my thing where that is. Mm -hmm. Q and A, where did you say it is? 
on desktop it's at the bottom of the at desktop it's at the oh bottom. actually it's on the top now i'm looking it's on the top of mine okay You're on the phone okay. i see it okay i did perfectly okay. fine with you asking all the questions same. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know what you mean though, because sometimes um, you don't know what would be a great question for us. So I'm really happy. I'm really used to doing this. I, I live on Zoom. So I'm, um, I'm, I, just, I just have to go get my glasses. Um, to do find that. a good question for us to answer. What we'll that's do helpful. is um, Jill and yeah. I will kind of like tag team we'll that. that. And okay. it's really short, and um, you guys can both, um, Diane and Lisa, you guys can kind of chime in with context from there. Does that sound good? Okay, that okay. sounds good. And I, I can go get my glasses too. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's just what I'm mine. Can I generally ask how long do you how long do you want our responses to be? Because I know you said Good question. I think between like max three to three to four minutes. Um, I. You know, some will be longer versus shorter, and we'll just kind of. Yeah. I don't think we'll get through all the questions I have prepared, but I'll be the one to kind of like worry about the pace and um, make sure that, you know, it will, we might skip over a question or two or if something organically comes up. But I think like two to three minutes is like a good benchmark for you. Okay. Okay, cool. You guys are going to do so great. And I, you know, I'm so thankful to have you guys here and we're all learning. Um, I, I am by no way a tech guru and this is, you know, it's going to be an experience, but I know a lot of women are excited. We've had, um, oh, 250 women sign up. And then I'm literally having my husband like field emails and field Instagram messages because more and more people are wanting to come. And so I think it just speaks to like, right. me that it's, you know, Beautiful. so thank you guys so much. Great. Oh. Okay. Yeah, thank cool. you. And okay. So we, we come back at what time do you want us back? Um, at, uh, in seven minutes. Okay. 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 Great. <laughs> you want us to tune out or just leave our screens open? Whatever you I think I'm just gonna leave it open. Okay. I think Whatever. that's good. Okay. 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 Okay, okay great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll see you in a minute.
there. So cute. Jill, um, by the way, I love that Emma's your daughter. She's been so <laughs> lovely to work with. Oh, thank you. Yes, no, she's very efficient. And she oh, runs such like a big thing. But the fun thing at the moment is I have her with me, which isn't normally the case. Yeah. So um, we're all in upstate New York together. Her boyfriend, Mikey, and my husband, Noah, and I. And so it's great because I'm doing tons of these webinars and she just makes everything really smooth. She gives me a call uh -huh. time. I make fun. She's got it all I know, set you're up. You're like a professional. I feel like out of all of us here, I'm like looking at you. I'm like, Jill knows what's going on. <laughs> I, I, I've been doing a lot of this, and she, but I have Emma. Emma is the professional. I literally uh -huh. just sit down and talk. I mean, how lucky am I? Yeah. yeah she said, so so I did an IG live yesterday. Oh, and I, I mean, we've been talking it. for quite some time to make this happen and I like I'm a firm believer timing is everything and this is the perfect moment it is the perfect but, time perfect but she's been so lovely to work with <laughs> but she um she um that the, their little department of Unova are the happiest department oh. they social media and they run our blog and they handle our PR and our relationships with other healthcare practices and That's all so of our advertising. They're busy, but they, um, yeah. they do a lovely job. I'm lucky. <laughs> yes. I was telling her um, that I'm really excited because my mom and my sister get to come to their first masturbating event now that it's virtual. Um, so I'm like super excited that they're joining and yeah, it's gonna be special that they're there. It's really That's cute. so great. Yeah. I'm so happy you're doing this and this is your first virtual event. This is so cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I wanted to check, does everyone have their like drink of choice that they're bringing tonight? Because we're going to do my trusty cup of tea. Okay, great. Great. <laughs> As I mean, mostly drinking cup of tea and a glass of water. <laughs> I have a, have you guys heard of Ken Euphorix? No. Oh. Yes, I have. It's so good. What is it? It's this like a non-alcoholic adaptogenic elixir drink. Which, what's it called? Can Euphoric. I'll send you a link. Their branding is very cool. Uh, okay, great. Yeah. Okay, we're, we'll get started in just one more minute. Allow people to kind of sign on. Diane, I just want to make sure that you know that you can turn your mic off when you're not speaking. It's in. Oh. And that's going to save you. Okay. <laughs> I have to look for where the mic. Oh, mute. Okay. It's on the far left. Yeah. And the yeah. one other thing is um, I've tried to infuse opportunities for our community to get engaged and also take rituals that we do in our events in real life and bring them here. We'll see, let's see how they work out. But if you guys wanna follow along with their answers, if you pull up the chat box functionality, you'll be able to see like what the attendees are writing in to us. Um, I'll be reading them out loud, but if you guys wanna follow along too, that's always an option. Okay. Cool. So and we'll get the, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, Diane, the other thing, if you haven't done one of these before, is that um, when you speak, you start to appear in the big screen. And so it's good when uh, it's not like having a conversation in some ways. So if someone else is speaking, there's, it's better not to respond. Okay. Yeah. Be in a, so, you know, now normally you'd go, uh huh, and yeah, and things like that. It doesn't, it, it, it's not quite good at that. It, it can only hear yes. one person. I got time. it. <laughs> so when we're on this view, so like it's fine to respond when we're on this view where we're all four on screen, but when I put it to speaker view like this, it's really important that we all stay quiet um, because it'll toggle around, it'll bounce around. So um, good, to okay, cool. good to know. I've done Zoom, but as the host. So oh, don't worry. I, I mean, yeah. I took like two hours of Zoom classes before this like nerded out. Um, okay, cool. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to start broadcasting. Okay. 
Hi guys, welcome. I see a lot of people are joining. We're gonna be getting started soon. Just waiting for everyone to log in. Thank you for being here tonight. So many people, it's so exciting. Okay, amazing. Cool. Well, I think we'll, we'll wait for a few more people to get in, but we can start with just a quick hello. So, hi guys. I am Megan, the founder of Moxie Made. Thanks for being here at our first virtual Cocktails and Conversations. I wanted to quickly introduce you all to our incredible mentors that are here with us tonight. Um, and then, um, I'll toggle off and tell you a little bit more about Moxie Made, and then we'll circle back with them for the panel portion of the evening. Um, so we have Jill here from Unova. Give them a little wave. Hi, you guys. Yay. We have Diane here, who is a medical intuitive and energy healer and author. Hi, Hi everybody. everybody. So you're glad to be here. You're calling in from California, right? Yes, Santa yes. Monica, California. And then Jill's calling in from upstate New York. Cool. And then we have Elisa Shankel, who is the co-founder of Heal House um, in Brooklyn, as well as she's Riki Attuned. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Are you calling in from Brooklyn? I am calling in from Brooklyn. From Brooklyn. Okay, amazing. Cool. Well, welcome guys. Thank you. Um, so I know we have a lot of fresh new faces here tonight. Um, so I wanted to kick off the evening um, just by telling you a little bit about Moxie Made in case you're not familiar. Um, our mission at Moxie Made is to create intentional spaces where women can have accessibility to holistic mentorship and a space to form meaningful connections. So I created Moxie Made really out of the need in my own life. Um, I recently moved to Austin, Texas about four months ago from New York and I was in New York for close to nine years and I'm really excited about this event and what makes it so special is We've been planning to launch nationally um, in the upcoming months. And then with everything that's happened, we have pivoted really quickly. And now we're bringing our, um, our events virtually. And then we're going to also be you know, gathering again in real life when we can do that through local Moxie Made chapters. So thank you guys so much for being here. It means so much to me. Um, like I said, I, you know, created Moxie Made out of a need I had. So when I moved to New York City, I realized that as an adult, you really don't get that clear roadmap to success and fulfillment. And I was craving mentorship. I was craving, you know, having guidance from women that have been there and thrived, but I didn't feel like I had accessibility to that. And like me, 88% of women would like a mentor, but less than half of them feel like they have one. Likewise, it can, you know, I'm sure so many of you out there can empathize with me, but it can be really difficult to make friendships as an adult. You know, networking is so agenda driven and it feels really inauthentic, like you have to impress someone. And so with Moxie Made, we are really that community of courageous women that support one another through mentorship, actionable advice, and forming authentic, real connections. Um, we approach mentorship from a holistic perspective. We, as women, we all get to decide what a fulfilled life looks like but we believe it starts at that integration of professional, personal, and spiritual alignment. And so from a content lens, we're always aiming to, you know, get really real and be vulnerable because that's what creates connection. And that's what allows us to see that we all share in these same struggles, but likewise, we all have the same potential. So thank you guys for being here. It, um, it's a really special evening. So this is our first virtual event. I have um, been kind of doing a crash course in 
watched Zoom for the past two days. You'll have to forgive us if there's some hiccups that come along, but I do want to kind of give you the digital lay of the land, if you will. Um, so all of our attendees tonight, your um, mics and your videos will remain off, but we really want you to be engaged. Um, what makes Moxie Made so special is our community, that's magic. And so, you know, this event is for you. And so there's gonna be opportunities where we want you to participate and really be involved because that's what matters. Um, likewise, um, we sent through a inspiration kit ahead of the event. The purpose of that kit is for you guys to really, you know, after this event, reflect on your own inner wisdom and guidance um, and really take time to figure out like what does healing mean to you and what areas of your life you want to heal. So at the bottom of your screen, um, you're going to see the Q&A polling and the chat functionalities. We're going to be using those at different moments throughout tonight. Um, any questions that you guys have for the panelists, um, definitely direct them to Q&A. Um, that's where we'll be kind of referring to all of those questions when we get to the Q&A portion of the evening. Whereas with the chatbot functionality, that's where we're going to be prompting you guys to um, shout out a few answers throughout the night. And that's where I want to get started. I think with you know, virtual events, it's very easy to feel disconnected in a way and feel, you know, forget that there's actually humanity and women gathering here tonight on the other, you know, the other side of these screens. Um, and what I hope to do and what I would love for us to do, you know, we have right now around 150 women that are here from all over the country tonight um, joining us. And we're all here together as women with the same intention to learn about energy healing, to support one another in this experience um, and to um, really learn together. So I would love everyone at this moment to, it seems like some people already are, um, but I would love everyone to go into the chat function and say a little bit of hello and where are you guys from. And while we do that, if the, all of the speakers can make sure to mute your mics at the moment. So I see people from Philadelphia, from New York, from Austin, Tucson, Kentucky, Arizona, Denver, Detroit, Oh, that's amazing. Um, Brooklyn, Maryland, LA, Seattle, ah, Canada, you guys. Oh my gosh, Australia, Connecticut. Oh, you guys, that gives me goosebumps. This is so exciting. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, you guys are what makes Moxie Made special, um, truly. So I know we are all here tonight to uh, talk about energy healing, right? To, we hope to demystify it, um, learn how it actually works. And then something that's really important to us at MoxieMade is making sure that every event we do, you guys are walking away with actionable advice and wisdom that you can integrate into your own life, not just inspiration. So our lovely mentors are going to be teaching um, us some tutorials of their favorite exercises that we can all um, incorporate into our own um, self-care rituals. So when I was thinking about the first virtual event, um, and Jill and I have actually wanted to collaborate for a while, um, energy medicine just felt naturally like the perfect first topic. Um, it's no surprise that collectively everyone is feeling a lot of fear, a lot of grief, the struggling with control, losing control of control we never really had in the first place, um, and collectively needing to heal. And I truly believe that healing starts, you know, the collective healing needs to happen, but it also happens on that individual level. Um, and I know for myself, I am someone that has uh, a chronic autoimmune illness. So I have fibromyalgia. I was diagnosed about seven years ago. 
And while I take a really integrative approach to Western and Eastern medicine for my healing and my journey, um, Reiki in particular has been so profound for me in terms of emotional release and physical impact in my health. And I know for some of us tonight, you know, you might be a bit skeptical or curious and that's completely okay. Um, but something when that, as spiritual as I am, I'm also very logical. And when that logical, skeptical part of my brain takes over, something that helps for me to prove out the possibility of energy healing is panic attacks. So stay with me, um, but I would love to take a poll to see how many of you, it should be popping up on your screen, have experienced a panic attack or an anxiety attack before. I know this, these past couple of weeks have been extremely anxiety provoking. I'm right there with you. I am, um, when I was in college, I suffered uh, my senior year with a lot of anxiety attacks and it's definitely very real. We'll just give everyone another moment or two to answer. So it looks like, um, similar to me, unfortunately about 80% of us here tonight have experienced um, the reality of panic attacks. And, you know, what's fascinating about panic attacks is it's a very real physical reaction that we're feeling, but it's all created by our thoughts and our brain. Um, so that, you know, those real symptoms of heightened, you know, heightened heart rate, um, numbing, shortness of breath, like it stems from our thought patterns. Um, and so whenever I'm trying to prove out the logic of energy medicine, it's like, why, why can't the reverse be true? Um, why can't healing energy and thoughts um, and beliefs create this physical impact on our bodies and also this energetic alignment? And I truly believe that our thoughts create our reality, that a thought you keep thinking over and over becomes a belief. And those beliefs, whether they're subconscious or conscious, they create neurochemical reactions in our brains that send signals to our body to create physiological reactions in our body and also change our energy vibration. And so um, on that note, I would love to know who here has had experience with energy healing before. So the, the poll should pop up. Okay. Take a moment to answer. We'll give it about another 15 seconds. So it looks like about 70% um, have, have dabbled in energy healing in some way and about 31% of us are completely new to it, which is really exciting. So tonight, um, that's just really good context for us to have in mind as we go into the panel portion of the evening. So I would love to welcome up all of my amazing mentors. Um, definitely unmute yourselves, ladies. Hi guys, thanks for being here tonight. I so appreciate it because I know this event, we have brought it together in like a week, which is wild. So thank you guys for making time for something that's so important and so needed right now. Um, I'd love to go around and have each of you introduce yourself. And then also um, we asked everyone tonight to bring their cocktail of choice um, to make it a true girls night in or drink of choice um, or form of liquid, liquid courage. So let's definitely hear what you brought. Jill, why don't you start? <laughs> <laughs> well, hi. Thank you for having me here. Um, I do want to say, because you can't hear it, but there's a little bit of feedback when we all have our mics open and people are chatting about it in the chat. So I wanted to draw your attention to it. 
But I am Jill Blakeway. I'm a doctor of Chinese medicine. I founded a practice called Unova in New York City, which has three centers, all of which are shut at the moment because of our pandemic. But we do have a virtual practice and we are treating our patients online and prescribing herbs and meditating with people and giving advice. Chinese wisdom has much advice to offer when it comes to self-care. And I'm the author of three books, one on how to get pregnant called Making Babies, one on restoring your libido called Sex Again, and my latest book, which is relevant to tonight, is called Energy Medicine, The Science and Mystery of Healing. So I'm looking forward to talking about that. It's so good. (laughs) It's so good. I finished it in like two days. Thank you. There we go. So um, I want to, again, I want to thank you for having me here. This is just a wonderful uh, time to gather everyone together, really a special and important time to be together and focusing our energy. I'm Diane Goldner. I'm a healer. I've been a healer for more than 20 years. I used to be a journalist, including an investigative journalist, and I actually came to healing by as a skeptic, investigating healing, which I can talk more about as we go on. And I'm the author of three books on healing. My first book, um, I started as a journalist and it's called How People Heal. And like Jill, I looked at all the science. My book is a bit older than Jill's. So hers is a little, uh, has some more research in it. And then I have a book on, you know, different case studies and ways to look at what's going on in your body and how to heal your body called Yes, You Can Heal. And um, my third book is my personal journey going from a journalist to a healer called Awakening to the Light. It was a pretty intense journey. So anyway, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm drinking tea. I've almost finished my tea and my backup is water. (laughs) Thank you. Okay, am I on? Hi guys, am I on? Great, You're on. okay. You're good. Um, awesome. This is really awesome. Thanks so much, um, Megan, for inviting me. My name's Elisa, and I am the co-founder of Heal House. We are a wellness space in Brooklyn, New York. Um, we approach holistic medicine, wellness from different aspects to daily yoga, da- uh, daily yoga meditation classes, workshops, daily practitioner services, everything from therapy to acupuncture to energy healing to astrology readings. So we really try to approach wellness, body, mind, and spirit, and really give options for people to come as you are and choose what works for you. We don't really have this um, approach to wellness where it's intimidating and where we kind of tell you how to approach your healing. We kind of leave it up to you. We also have a wellness bar in the front, which is really amazing. And I curated a lot of our coffee alternatives, things like fruit coffee, um, mocha mushroom. I've been caffeine free for about eight years. And so that's why I am drinking right now our Hill House ginger turmeric tea. Um, So it's really nice to be vibing with you guys over some tea. And I'm looking forward to talk about um, energy healing specifically because it's, it's really what brought me to this work and really transformed and changed my life. So it's, it's a beautiful thing to be in community talking about. Thank you. And every, everyone in our community that's joining us tonight, get excited because Heal House is generously giving us an exclusive discount to their virtual events for this, um, for this month, which is really exciting. So be on the lookout for that after the event. Um, but cheers, guys. Thanks for being here. And cheers to everyone that's joining us. Yeah. Um, so next, I'd love to hear your beginning. So what, when was the first time you were exposed to energy medicine? And were you initially skeptical or believers right from the onset? What was that story? Well, for me, Megan, it was, um, I'm an acupuncturist. And so that is a form of energy medicine. But acupuncturists have, uh, we've been very busy trying to sort of fit in with the Western medical community. And we've kind of downplayed the energetics of our medicine. And I was particularly like that. I started my career in a hospital. I was sort of scientifically rigorous. and um, But it came through me rather than from me. And I tell this story in the book. But I had a patient who I'd been treating for back pain 
Jane, who was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He was an older man and his, he, he didn't want to have the Western medical treatment. And I have to tell you that I am not someone who um, thinks that we're the alternative. I think we're all, you know, when we all get our, our egos out of the way and work together, that's when the patients benefit. Um, but we talked to his doctors and his doctors said prostate cancer is you know, pretty slow growing, you can have three months. And I worked with him and I gave him Chinese herbs. And, but while I was treating him for the first time, I felt energy run through me and it was like tingling down my spine, like tonic water. And it was unmistakable. And then it would come out of my hands and he would feel it. And um, uh, at the end of three months, he, he had reversed his cancer. I don't um, take much credit for that. I think uh, he did many things, as you'll read in the book. But he had reversed his own cancer, and it made an impression on me. And after that, this energy was something I played with. I knew I could do acupuncture without the needles, although I love the needles, and it's what I do. And like um, I think anyone um, sensible, I wanted to know what this was, you know, is this a placebo? Um, do I have very impressive energy coming out of my hands that people can feel, but it does absolutely nothing at all. <laughs> and they just are so impressed by it, they get better. I think that's a legitimate question. And so over the years, I have um, talked to healers and mystics, but also scientists about what is this? What prompts people to self heal? And then Harper Collins very kindly gave me a, a wonderful commission and I got to go all over the world and see some of the best healers I've ever seen, but also talk to scientists, physicists, um, lab-based scientists, biochemists, about what, it, what are the prompts, the energetic prompts that prompt people to heal. So that was how I started. Go get the book, guys. It's so good. <laughs> Diane, what's your story? Well, I was a journalist, and the first thing that happened is that... Um, I had written a piece for the New York Times and after it came out, the woman I had profiled said that she would like me to come and meet her spiritual teacher, her meditation teacher. And, you know, she said it would change my life, which I did not really believe, but I thought it might make a great story. So I went and um, met the teacher, didn't think anything had happened. But um, after that, I began to meditate and um, things began to shift. And one of the things that happened is I went on a blind date. <laughs> Funny way to change your life. But I went on a blind date with a psychiatrist and he pulled out a book on energy healing. And I w I'd been an investigative reporter for a law magazine at one point. And I looked at this book and I thought, oh my God, this guy needs to be um, committed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. And, uh, but I looked at it and I was absolutely, at the same time as I was horrified, I was also fascinated. I thought, my God, if this is true, what a scoop this must be. That's how naive I was at the time. So I, first I did a magazine story. Um, the book was by Barbara Brennan, who's a very well-known teacher of healing. And so I profiled her and her school. And I realized as I was reporting this, I found some cases where there was medical documentation. You know, a woman who'd had um, macular degeneration, which is considered incurable. And, a, and there were pictures of the hole in her eyes. And in one eye, it had disappeared. And in the other eye, it got smaller after a series of healings. And there were other cases like that. And I realized there was something to it. So I decided I would really investigate it deeply, that if this was real, there had to be science behind it. I did not believe that it was, and I actually, uh, to the, you know, uh, there is a, there's more science than people realize. And uh, a lot of it's in the quantum physics domain. And um, anyway, that began a five-year journey where I was spending all my time with healers. And they would say they did this, and I would think that could never work. And then I would try it, and it would work. <laughs> so my mind was constantly being expanded. And that is basically um, the long and short of how I became a healer. I was hanging out with healers. I was trying everything. I was sitting in on the workshops. I was doing healings all the time thinking it was just to write a more intelligent book. So um, I was quite surprised when, even though I'd been uh, told by my first healer that I would be a healer, I just could not believe that. But eventually I had to accept that that was my path. And so that's how I became a healer.
Yeah, thank you. Oh, I don't even know where to start. I feel like this is such a loaded question in like a small part. But um, I got introduced to energy healing, specifically Reiki energy healing, about four years ago now. Um, I, I always say I got led. I got led to my teacher. And it just was kind of like this domino effect that changed a lot in my life, healed a lot for me to, in order for me to expand into the things that I'm doing now. Um, I went to, I went down the street actually from my home. There's like a little small studio and there was a medicine sound, a, med a medicine song healing ceremony with my teacher at the time. And so it was a Reiki sound bath experience. I never experienced this before. It's just one of those things I popped into and I resonated with Olivia. And during the experience, it was really powerful. And I had a lot of um, visions and synchronicities that happened and you know, she had brought up that she was, she did one-on-one -on -one sessions and I thought, let me just do this. And I'm, I'm not a skeptic. I've never been, and I'm also a very deeply spiritual person. So for me, it was definitely not that experience where I was like, what is this? It was kind of like, bring it on. Like, I want to learn more. I want to experience this. So I had that session with her and it was really powerful and I received a lot of impressions and it, I was kind of waiting for it to kind of come to me in different ways and how it needed to exist. I'm not really a seeker. I'm kind of the person where I allow things to kind of show up when they need to. That's powerful. And so, yeah. Um, and then I had a very traumatic experience that happened to me that also led me into the work deeper that I'm doing. I actually lost my brother three years ago. And this was before Heal House even existed. And I went through, it was a very awakening experience. Um, in communication with him in different ways. And a lot of things happened to me that were definitely like Diane was saying, you know, when things, certain things happen in transition, you just don't, you understand it on a deeper level. level. So it's not something that you're questioning. Um, and so at that time I was waiting to receive Reiki, but I didn't know who I was going to receive it from. And my teacher who'd been doing this for 10 years, she decided to finally do a training that year and so I ended up doing um, my Reiki one training with her on 11 11 17 which was really incredible day um, and then I went into Reiki two training with her and this was around the time Hill House was being born but during that time and that process I I went through extreme healing I knew that I needed to heal myself on a deeper level um, and I'm looking forward to talking more about what that means for me but I needed to remove a lot of trauma from my body that I was experiencing at the time and from my energetic field in, in order for me to heal and to move forward and to utilize that energy in a way that was going to serve me. So that was definitely kind of my initial experience and there's a lot more details around it, but um, I can honestly say it changed my life and allowed me to be in the place that I am and for me to do the work that I do now. You know, it's really beautiful, um, Elisa, is that I feel like you know, all, thank you all of you for sharing those stories, but yours in particular, I feel like is this really beautiful example of inspiration for what a lot of people are going through. Like we are all feeling right now a lot of collective grief, um, just on so many different levels and the ability to kind of use energy healing as a channel to cha channel that energy in a different way, I think is um, really powerful. So I know tonight um, around 30% of us are completely new to energy medicine, energy healing. So I would love to hear from you all, you know, what is it and what are different modalities that people might be familiar with? I know we've talked about Reiki and acupuncture and a question that, ha that has come up is, is one modality more powerful than another? So broadly speaking, um, Megan, energy medicine refers to all of those modalities, and it is a very broad field that either diagnose or treat by um, accessing the electrical energy or the energy that pulses through each cell. And you're right, um, acupuncture um, is a form of energy medicine. Reiki is another. Um, every single ancient culture had some concept that there was an energy that animates us. Um, in India, it was called prana. Um, uh, the Greeks referred to the breath of life. Um, uh, it, it, it's, you know, the Chinese called it chi. And what they were really referring to in some ways was the body's intelligence. 
and um, the body's own ability to self-regulate when given, uh, particularly when given a prompt. And um, I don't think that one is more um, uh, powerful than another, actually. And I looked at lots of different healers. I looked at hands-on healers and distance healers and all sorts of things when I was um, uh, exploring my book. But I did get a little clue from myself. I submitted my own body to science to see what was going on in me. And they did an EEG of my brain and an EKG of my heart. And what they found was that my heart and my brain go into resonance. They go at the same frequency when I'm working. And to do that, I have to slow my brain down quite a lot, in fact. And then the patient's heart, thanks to something called mirror neurons, goes into the same frequency as mine. And at that point, it would appear that uh, that information gets passed. And so I think it depends. The healers, I taught myself to do that. I don't think I'm remotely special, incidentally, and I give um, instructions in the book. I think anyone can do this. In fact, I think it's our birthright. And we just have to, you know, have a few pointers or want to. Um, but um, uh, in my case, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm becoming like a little antenna in some ways. And then the patient is resonating with me, which is very beautiful. And it feels really good to both of us when, we're, when we do it. And I suspect that that is really um, uh, more important than which modality you're doing. It's the creation of a sort of resonant bond between one person and another where information can be passed. Thank you. No, that's, that's so interesting. Do you akin it similar to resonance you would feel in meditation or, um, I don't know if Diane and Elisa, you guys have something to add towards the, yeah, the definition? For sure. Um, so, there's so much to say about any energy healing and how it works. Um, so I'll, I'll just say that I have the same experience as Jill. Um, I can literally feel when the person I'm working with, their heart comes into resonance with my heart and it's like the door opens and that's when there's almost a merging of the energy fields. And so I'm not actually doing anything to the other person as much as, um, there's a resonance and that that shift just happens very naturally. Um, and it's a really, even if somebody's in a great deal of pain or grief, there's something extremely uplifting um, about that union and uh, healing. Because I can literally feel that person's heart open and relax. And then other things start to shift and move. So I want to say that, you know, when I began investigating healing without knowing anything, you know, people talk about subtle energy and I'd always be like, what is that? And I want to I want to address that because it took me years to really understand that I get one answer here and one answer there. And to finally synthesize it, I feel like I can save everyone five years. <laughs> so I want to do that. <laughs> so it's everything about you that is not physical. So it's your vitality. It's your emotions. It's your beliefs. It's your desires. It's your intentions. It's your memories. All of that is your energy. And most of us think those things are inside our head. But actually, um, you can feel, all of us are feeling and we resonate. If somebody's angry, you might get angry. So that's a very simple example where that energy is so palpable. And if you go into a church, you have a different feeling than if you go into a bar. If you just close your eyes, you'll feel that. So the, those energies um, affect our body. And... Um, and that's really how it works. So um, over time, there, you know, if um, there's a contraction in the energy, it, it affects the cells and then organs in the body. And so the healing is reversing that process, creating a flow and um, harmony so the body can function. And the, it's not just the body that gets healed. It's everything in your life. So, yeah. That's what I would say. I have more to say, but I don't want to overwhelm people. Okay. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Lisa. First off, it's just, it's so beautiful to hear both of you speak. It's, it's like overwhelming my, I feel like it's overwhelming my energy field right now because I'm feeling so deeply what you're expressing. 
I just want to preface, I'm not an expert. And I think it's, it's, I am here as a student. So it's, it's also really amazing to hear because you're, you're expressing into words what I feel. Um, I guess I could speak a little bit to specifically Reiki energy. Um, because it's like they said, it's very broad. I can speak to my own experience. So I'm Reiki attuned. Basically, that means that I got attuned specifically through the USUI system through a person that has been practicing and training as a Reiki master. My teacher is also a shaman as well. So that's a whole other conversation, but um, she's been practicing a lot of these teachings for a very long time. And so essentially, um, just a tiny little history. I, I'm gonna give you just a little blurb. Um, Dr. Mikhail Yusvi was sitting fasting on a mountain for 21 days and he received this knowledge around Reiki energy and was enlightened and he got attuned to an energy force. And essentially that was distributed down through different lineages and this was in the early 1900s. When it was brought to the West, it was distributed in different ways, symbols were added. And essentially when I received the teachings and the trainings from my teacher, I'm, I, I get attuned to that energy through my teacher. And then I also learn about the history. I receive um, education on the hand placements, the symbols. Um, you, you take turns in working on each other just to give you just like a little bit of a blurb. Um, but it's everything, for me, it was like putting on glasses for the first time. It was like, oh, it was like seeing the world in the way that, um, I'm supposed to. Uh, it heightens my intuitive abilities. Um, I don't. I'm not a. I don't practice on people as a practice. I work on myself. That was a big part of my own healing, and then I do exchanges with people. So that's kind of my relationship to it now. I know it may shift at some point, but that's my relationship to it now. But what it did for me was. I mean, it's, it's beautiful how you you. Diane, you said it, it was like a, a medley of memories and emotions because when you are working with someone, you get impressions that are like, it's such an expansive um, bowl of different experiences. I mean, for me, it can be anything from channeling a memory that someone has and then receiving that from someone else about me. Or I may be um, intuitively feeling in something in someone's body where it's depleted. And I may not, it's a resonance, like you couldn't have described that better. I, I may not know exactly like what it is and put my finger on it. But when I bring it up after the fact, I learn that that person has a deficiency there or they're, they're struggling in something that's connected to that organ or connected to that place in their body. And it's, it's, it's very nuanced and I think it's different for everyone. And I think depending on like, you know, if how long you've practiced and, and what your um, experience is like, it, it, it can grow and it can expand. Um, I know I'm, I have not been like keeping up with my practice and on myself and, and actually have been doing it more in light of what's going on right now, because it's really important, but it's, it was a very beautiful thing to witness you guys expressing it because it's, it's exactly what I resonate with. Mm, thank you. Yeah. I mean, what I find so interesting is the, I mean, the explanations, thank you all, they were like so beautiful, but it's also a very, um, I could see to people, maybe from the perspective of people that are completely new to this and completely curious, it might feel a bit more abstract because it's um, kind of emotive um, or feel more theoretical. And so I know Jill and Diane, both of you guys have done extensive research in terms of from a quantum physics perspective, from a research perspective, like how does this actually work? And um, how has research proven that it's, it's actually very effective use of healing? Well, you can, um, you can measure um, the frequency that comes out of um, hands-on healers' hands. There was a 1992 study um, from Japan of Qigong healers, who are our version of energy healers in Chinese medicine. They're very highly trained. These were Qing, Qigong masters. And they emit a consistent low frequency from their hands. And interestingly, that is the same frequency that orthopedic hospitals use. They use um, electricity, but it is the same low frequency to heal soft tissue and bone quicker. Um, so um, we can um, see that um, the effect uh, of healing and we can also measure what's coming out how it transmits 
ethics, I think there's a little bit of a gap in our knowledge. But um, one of the interesting stories in my book, and I dedicated an entire chapter to this man because he fascinated me so much. And Diane and I were with him just a month ago in LA, um, in fact, um, is a, a man called Dr. William Bengston from City University. And Bill, as we know him, um, uh, was taught a hands-on healing technique by a psychic healer. And he decided to take it into the lab and experiment and see if it worked. And um, he, he took mice that are specially bred to have cancer, poor mice. And these mice always die on day 27. That's how they, uh, this works. That's how they test pharmaceuticals. And I know this feels sad, so I just want to tell you that these mice have a happy ending. I feel like I should tell you that now. Um, although not all research mice do. Um, but um, Bill did the technique. They, they, they gave the mice breast cancer and um, Bill did the technique and they all recovered. And what's more, when they re-injected them with cancer, they couldn't get it. And Lauren is just asking what's Bill's last name and uh, uh, Marissa answered her, Bengston. Thank you, Marissa. <laughs> Um, but um, they, they couldn't re-get cancer. And um, they have um, done this experiment over and over again at City University. It gets a little bit more complicated. There were control mice that got looped in by a morphic field. Um, and I, so it's why I dedicate an entire chapter of energy medicine to this man. But um, what it proved to me is that um, the mice do not know that they're being healed. And so it's not simply placebo this at this point. And interestingly, Bill did a really smart thing uh, as a scientist, and he is a pure scientist. Um, all good science should be replicable. You know, you can't have a special someone somewhere and just study them that nobody else knows about or can see. You need to build on each other's knowledge. And um, so he got groups of skeptical students and colleagues, and he taught them the technique, and they could all do it too. And that's why I say we can all do this. Um, uh, Bill's experiments rather proved that. He taught them the technique. He very generously let me give the technique in my book. It's simple, although it requires a bit of practice to actually do it. Um, and everybody he taught it to could reverse cancer in the mice. And that I thought was amazing. So that's such a beautiful, I mean, his work is really extraordinary and wonderful. Um, as Jill knows, I really do a lot of long distance healing. And I want to preface that because <laughs> I know how strange that may sound. When I was first in guest investigating healing and healers would tell me they could do this long distance, I'd be like, yeah, and what bridge are you going to sell me? <laughs> so <laughs> it serves me right because now I, I work with people all over the world. And, um, and people can feel me, they can feel when it starts, they can feel when it ends, they can feel the energy move, you know, different people have different experiences. But this is why I mentioned quantum physics before. Um, and there is research uh, around this. Um, there was an amazing study done by California Pacific Medical Center on long distance healing. And so they took um, a series of AIDS patients. This is before the triple cock tails were developed and uh, they and they had a series of healers and the um, patients didn't know if they were receiving treatment or not because it was all long distance and uh, the healers did a treatment a, you know a day for 10 weeks and at the end of that time there actually wasn't that significant a difference between the control group and the healed group but three months later it was dramatic and it was statistically significant. And I remember later I interviewed one of the gentlemen who was in the study and he, um, he told me a very interesting story. He said that he was sure that he was not in the treatment group because he got very, very sick. And I've seen this happen. Sometimes there's a healing crisis. He got very, very sick and thought he was going to die. And all of a sudden, he started to feel better, happier, and, um, you know, um, and it turned out he was in the treatment group. And he said something so profound, and I want to share this because um, he said, what does it mean, you know, if somebody's sending all this positive energy and it heals me, what does it mean if somebody's sending negative energy to me, right? I mean, there's... Um, you know, people send hate energy to this person or that person. 
And it's a very profound question. I'm not even going to answer it because I think the answer is self-evident. Um, but I do want to say that um, um, one of the things I learned in the process of becoming a healer is that every thought and feeling we have is significant, not only for ourselves, but for everyone else too. And so um, we all have, um, I would say, even a responsibility to heal and to stay in the highest state that we can. And I feel this is very relevant now because we are really facing hard times uh, as, a, as, a, as a species. Um, and um, it's especially important now. So I think that's, you know, a perfect transition and something that you also mentioned, Jill, is that the, you know, that everyone has this ability to heal themselves, that we all have this gift and it's not just a select few. And I know, um, uh, Elisa, that you practice Reiki first on yourself to help process that grief and that something that is a big mission of yours is creating healing as a lifestyle. And I'd love to understand um, what that means to you and how you put mm -hmm. healing into your practice every day. Yeah. I mean, I think that was beautiful what you just said first and foremost. Like, I, I think people, and this, and this can go, I think everyone is their own version of your own healer, like, in my personal opinion. And when you're people try to heal people all the time and it can just be by you know putting too much of yourself into someone not having energetic boundaries right it could be something simple where you're giving up your power and that's energy right and for me I knew that I mean in, in order for me and continually to do the work that I do and to hold community space for healing I have to make sure I'm healing myself and I have to make sure that I'm filling my cup up because if I'm not doing that it's the laws of the universe, it, it doesn't work. It, it's, it's a disconnect, it's stagnant energy, right? It's not gonna continue to flow because I'm not in flow. So for me, like I, the reason why I kind of created that tagline is because healing is such an integrated part of my life. It's not something where it's like, like I wake up to brush my teeth in the morning is how I see healing. I have to do something for myself every single day, body, mind or spirit or all three if I can get it in for that day. In, in order for me to feel like a whole human being, in order for me to be able to do the work that I do without depleting myself. And I'm really trying to push that message to people and integrate for them to integrate this into their life in a way that works for them. And also in a way that doesn't feel intimidating, because I think a lot of people feel like, you know, healing is something where I have to, you know, do it this many times i have to make this chunk out of my day it has to look like this i have to beat myself up about it if it's yeah. not perfect and really it's about i always say healing is first about self-awareness it's about just knowing what's going on plugging into yourself and asking your body like asking for your mind your body and your spirit to respond and understand what's going on with yourself right and then taking steps to what that looks like for your individual self because everyone's healing experience is different. It's not a one size fits all, right? So that's what I mean by healing as a lifestyle. It's something that you do when you wake up at some point throughout the day, you do something for yourself and you make that a, a part of your routine and a part of your life, just like you would be talking about, you know, a conversation at work because I feel like there's also a lot of stigma attached to mental health, a lot of stigma attached to healing and I really try to break down those barriers and to make it feel like these very human things that people experience is normal because it is. We're all living this human experience, right? And so, yeah, that's kind of what I mean when I say that. And, and even more now than ever, I think everyone's kind of experiencing that, that, that feeling of everything being stripped away, right? And then looking at yourself outside of your job, outside of things that maybe you identified with that don't define who you really are. And to be like, okay, now I need to do something about it. And this needs to become a part of my life, like who I actually am outside of these things. No, that's so powerful. And I, I love the way that you approach it as a lifestyle. And also, 
take it into the simplest things of like brushing your teeth makes it feel a lot more accessible and a lot more manageable because a lot of, I feel like this focus on self-care can also turn into a way that we're beating ourselves up for not doing enough and not being enough. Um, and touching upon what you mentioned of like this collective time, it's definitely bringing up everyone's shadows in a way that like we're having to for myself, like completely let go financially and just trust that I'm going to be provided for and that, that, you know, not be control of that or whether it's, you know, your identity is in your career. A lot of people are having to be stripped away of that. And so it's a moment that I feel like we naturally can go a lot inward, but it's very difficult and scary and we're not really able to hide from those things anymore. Um, one of a quote that I read and I'm going to paraphrase was, maybe we're also scared to slow down because it's gonna show us how we really feel. Um, and so I would love to hear from the three of you, just what is your kind of, your insights that you have for people during, during this time? So um, yes, it is a very scary time and um, for lots of people. And um, uh, as Diane said, you can pick up other people's emotions. I am going to, when I teach my exercise, I'm going to teach you how to clean off your energy field though. <laughs> and so I'm gonna give you something practical. And the important thing to understand is that you do have autonomy over your own energy field. So you can just clean it off. It's not, people think about sort of hexes and hooks and it, it all sounds very, dramatic and painful but the truth is that you it's like popping off fleas so you, you you can you can do it and so i'm going to teach you to do that but i think at the moment and um, for me i'm a practitioner of chinese medicine so i i go back to chinese philosophy and chinese philosophy posits that we all come out of a matrix of intelligent energy um called the Tao. Some people would call that source energy, some people would call that God, and that we ripple up into the physical in order to experience duality, yin and yang, and then we don't like experiencing duality very much, most of us, do you know what I mean? Like we, we would rather everything was smooth. Um, but being in the physical is hard, and at some point we will ripple back down into the Tao. But in the meantime, we're resourced by a matrix of energy. And Diane alluded to something when she said that you, you, know, you, you can't, you're memories aren't necessarily stored in your head. And I, I sort of looked at that in my book. Um, we're pulling information from that field at all times. And so um, when I teach the, the teaching portion of this, I'm going to teach you how to connect to source energy, ground yourself, and then clean off your energy field. And I promise you that if you open up to source, um, and it runs through you anyway, uh, but, but if, you, if you stay in that awareness, answers come and miracles happen, uh, you know, and of course the miracles, they talk of miracles, synchronicities happen, but it's amazing what um, information and resource you will get. So a lot of us got a, a shock. I am a hands-on healer and I do acupuncture on people and I had to close three centers. I have 50 stuff. I didn't fire them um, because they are amazing and um, I love them very much. They're my community and I believe we're going to be resourced. We changed to virtual um, we're up to about 100 consults a week. It's turning out to be really popular. We have tons of wisdom to, to give people. And I'm sort of um, walking in faith a bit like you. I'm assuming that um, uh, that as I open up, that, that, that the world I create for myself is a mirror of my inner state. And so this, the important thing is to work on my space and, and work on how I feel um, and work on my own fear and um, choose love and be expansive, pay my team, um, um, give free consults to people who can't afford me because they've been made unemployed. And um, I'm assuming that a source energy will, will show me my next step. That's beautiful. Well, I would yeah. love to save some time for some Q&A questions um, and make sure that we have full time for the, the exercises because I know everyone's really excited to learn some hands-on um, ways that we can you know, incorporate healing into our own life. We're all needing it. So at this moment, um, make sure that everyone, we have only one question. I think some people have included their questions within the 
the chat. Um, so if you did, make sure to copy them over to the Q&A um, so that we can have visibility to them. But thank you guys so much. Thank you. Cool. Um, so I'm not seeing any questions. I don't know if the, the rest of the ladies are. Oh, right there. So someone's asking for a good first step. But they've never explored this, but they want a good first step to incorporate healing into their life. I, I would answer that. Um, there's so many different ways to enter this. Um, one of the simplest ways is to sit down for five minutes and breathe in and breathe out while watching your breath. Um, you'll connect to yourself. You'll find out what you're really feeling. If you can extend it to a half an hour, great, 10 minutes. Um, your mind and your heart and your breath all become synchronized as you do that. So you're really just becoming the witness of your breath. And just as if you were sitting on the beach and watching a wave, you're not doing anything, you're not breathing, you're just the witness of that breath. And that's one of the simplest, it's actually not so simple, <laughs> but it's simple. It's the practice that can be challenging because your mind might move around, but you start to notice what's really in your mind. Mm -hmm. Another, very simple thing to do is set an intention for what you want to heal mm -hmm. and you will start to be guided. Intention is, uh, is what guides energy. Mm -hmm. A question here is um, they want to be a healer, but they're not sure which modality is the right one for them or how to get started in that. What advice do you guys have? I mean, I can just point out something I said earlier is that I'm not a seeker. I allow things to, I open myself up and I allow things to come to me, right? So I think if you kind of follow some of the tools that Diane said, um, like I also had mentioned earlier, it was very similar to what she said. I feel like the first step to healing is just self-awareness. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's sitting with yourself. It's, you have that, that's like the work you have to actually do. It's work, you know, it's work to, to dig deeper, to um, dig up all the things that maybe are not on the surface um, so that requires sitting with yourself, plugging into yourself. I often say to hold your heart and your stomach um, because I feel like those are two points that really help you really root into who you are and maybe impressions will come up, um, things that you haven't, yeah, that you haven't experienced before or just like being really in tune with connecting body, mind, and spirit, bringing them all together to kind of reveal. And then I often find that that starts to, lead into potentially something that you may be interested in. If it's something, you know, specific to the body that may lead into nutrition or herbalism, or if it's something that leads you into your energy field, but like looking for those conversions from what you're feeling within yourself to what modality that that may lean into or resonate with, I guess is just kind of a tip that I would recommend. There's a couple questions here around um, people that are practicing energy healing, but they're not sure if it's working. They aren't sure, you know, how do you know if it's working? What does that feel like? Well, I am, um, I, I mean, I chart with all my patients, um, you know, I'm a licensed acupuncturist, so I, I chart and I like to um, uh, set goals. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm quite sort of goal orientated. I think people, you know, so I set measurable goals and the patient and I start to meet them. A lot of my patients come to me for reproductive issues and hormone problems and things like that. And so I may say, look, you know, if someone's trying to have a baby, obviously our, our long-term goal is to get pregnant, but your short-term goals will be less PMS, less spotting, you know, no spotting at ovulation, that kind of thing. So I look for physical signs and symptoms uh, a lot of the time to make sure I've made progress. But actually when I'm doing the, the job, I know um, I'm 
effective or I'm, I'm making connection. It's hard to explain this and I've never put words on it before. When I feel peaceful, I've often um, met healers who were very ego based, who said that healing was very draining. And I think that's because the healing is coming from themselves rather than from outside themselves. And there's a place I get to where it feels effortless and um, connected and peaceful and I feel resourced and at that point um, usually the patient is feeling that too and that's a very healing place for both of us and I always tell people that when I give acupuncture I get a healing too I go into a little zone I feel some kind of flow and um, there's a place I get to that is deeply meditational and connected and calm uh, and so uh, it's a combination <laughs> but during the treatment that feeling of calm and being resourced by something bigger than myself is how I know I'm in the right zone. And then I do check to make sure I'm getting results because people work hard for their money and I want to make sure that, you know, I'm delivering what I say I'm delivering. There's also a lot of questions around um, how is energy healing connected to different kind of spirituality practices like astrology or ancestral healing. Um, Curious your your thoughts on that. Oh, Diane, I think you're on mute. Yeah, I think so too. Okay. <laughs> Um, you know, everything is made of energy. So all of these practices are interconnected. Um, um, astrology is going to give you a map of your potentials and challenges um, and healing can help you ameliorate and um, you know um, do you know bring things to the highest um, so uh, and then different uh, practices shamanic all these all these practices in my view are are basically um coming to the same they're working on the same thing which is your spiritual body i mean this energy the highest um level of your energy i don't, I don't think i mentioned it when i said all oh, your subtle energy you you do have spiritual light whether you're aware of it or not and um you know so um over the course of my process of becoming a healer, even though I, I think this is completely scientifically based, um, it, you know, it is a very spiritual practice or, um, and, and it's also completely scientific. You know, there's nothing in our world that th the separation itself is a, is, is a, is a um, something that needs to get resolved. It's not a real separation between the spiritual and the scientific. They're, they're really one and the same. Um, I don't know if that's helpful to people or if that I'm answering the question, but. Yeah, well, thank you all for all of your questions. Thank you to our mentors for providing um, such great insights. What I'd love to do, because I know everyone's really excited about the hands-on exercises, I wanna transition to that. Um, so Jill, I know you're gonna kick us off with um, the grounding exercise. Yes, let, uh, this is how I start sessions. Um, uh, I'm doing lots of virtual sessions with my patients and I'm distance healing at the moment. And I start sessions like this so that um, they're very accessible to me um, uh, when I'm um, treating them on Zoom. And so this is a grounding and opening exercise and then we're just going to clean off your field a little bit. So I want you to sit comfortably and um, on your chair. And then we're going to put down a root. And I've been liking tree roots recently. Um, so we're going to put down tree roots from our, the balls of our feet and from our sacrum. And imagine them going into the earth. And imagine them spreading out in the earth and then pushing down until you feel really heavy, not weighed down, just heavy, and you're here. The earth is, is, is yin in Chinese medicine. It's, it's the mother, it's, it's nurturing, it's moistening, it's calming. And then straighten your spine and imagine a great big ball of light above your head. And this is your own connection to source. 
and this is young energy this is this is dynamic it's moving it's transformational it's warming and then bring it in through the top of your head and let it flood your body with your own beautiful light this is inspiration i think it's interesting that inspiration is called after the in breath this is your access to a whole matrix of intelligence that you are cradled in and that you're safe in. And take that energy all the way to the tips of your toes until it meets that yin energy of Mother Earth. And we're just gonna sit in this for a minute because it feels really good. And this is who you really are. In Chinese philosophy, we, we say that the human being is the connection between heaven and earth. You are physical, but you're not just physical. As Diane pointed out, you're also all the bits of you that are not physical. Your memories, your beliefs, your intentions, your body's ability to be intelligent, the way different systems in your body communicate with each other. Those are all parts of your, your energy field. And then we're gonna take this beautiful light from source that is you, and we're gonna push it out of our skin about an inch so that you are completely surrounded by your own light. I do this every morning before I treat patients and every afternoon. And then we're gonna use your own light to just clean off your field. So anything that isn't yours at this point, put down into the ground, down your root. And by that, I mean other people's projections onto you, other people's judgments of you, unpleasantness, other people's need for you. You may want to fulfill their needs. These may be people you love, but the pull of other people's need, just put that down into the ground. And remember, this is easy. You, you have autonomy over your own field. This is, not, this is not a struggle. Pop them off like they're, you're brushing off a little insect. I sometimes imagine this as green slime going down into the root. And you should, um, I think, at a time like this where you're picking up other people's fear and you already have your own, it's not a bad idea to ground, fill yourself with your own light and then use your own light to push off other people's um, uh, energy every day. I would do it morning and night. I do it before and after every patient so that I'm uh, clear for, that, for the next patient and present. And then I'm gonna hand over to Elise. You stay in this position though, and she's gonna teach you some breathing exercises. I just got into the vibe of Jill's exercise. That was amazing. Um, I know everyone's, well, let me not say everyone, but um, some people are experiencing anxiety, stress, um, I have been going, I also recommend everyone right now to, to build some sort of altar space in your home or some place to go to that is your space, that's sacred, that where you can just come to and release and be, and release anything, like Jill said, that's not your own, right? That could be collective fear, that could be um, stress or trauma that's being triggered from the circumstances or being in isolation, but just being able to release that in a space where you feel safe is really important. Um, so I do this every morning as a part of my meditation. Sometimes I integrate it during my meditation or at the end. It's super simple. You may um, already know about it, but it's called the 478 calming breath. And I, if you're ever in a state of panic or stress or anxiety, this will bring you right out of it. It's super effective. Um, it's very quick. So like I had said earlier, we're just going to put um, where I feel like you can really tune in and get in touch, into your, get touch with your energy field in your body. Put your, your left hand on your heart and your right hand on the bottom of your abdomen. And you're just going to take a second. You can close your eyes if you'd like. 
Maybe take one breath and just root into yourself. Feel your heartbeat. Feel your natural, normal breath. Tune into your energy field. Tune into source. Allow it to just flow through you and just get rooted and comfortable and grounded. So what we're going to do for a couple times, we're going to breathe in for four. And then you're going to hold it for seven and you're going to release for eight. And sometimes I also like to throw my head back because I feel like my pathways open up more and I get oxygen down my spine and it feels really good. So if you feel called to do that, you can do that as well. So you can just maybe listen to me or join me for the first round, but we're going to breathe in for four. And we're going to hold it at the top for seven. And we're gonna release for eight. We're gonna do that again. Breathe in for four. One, two, three, four. Hold it at the top for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And release for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna breathe in again for four. Hold it at the top for seven. And release for eight. I do it one more time, breathe in for four. Hold it at the top for seven. And release for eight. We're gonna do it one more time. We're gonna breathe in for four. Hold it at the top for seven. And release for eight. Just sit here for a second and to feel the difference and to come back to your normal breath. And then you can open your eyes and feel the calm and relaxation and know that you are safe in your body. You're safe in this world. You are abundant. Okay, now just pass it to Diane. Cute. I think I'm going to put on a, a little bit of music. I don't know if everyone will hear it, but it'll just help us. So. Okay. So for this, if you, you can remain seated, and if you want to lie down, that's great too. So we're just going to go into a little meditation. I'm going to guide you just to bring light to every part of your body. So let's just start with the left foot. And just imagine radiant light filling your whole foot and going up to the ankle and all the tension releasing. Light is filling every cell. And moving up from your ankle to your knee. Radiant light filling every cell. All the tension releasing and moving up from your knee to your hip, letting light fill every cell and bringing your awareness to your right foot and ankle and just letting light fill every part of your foot and ankle, feeling all the tension releasing. And then bringing the light from your right ankle to your knee and your knee to your hip, letting all the tension go, experiencing radiant light. You can think you're imagining it, you may see it, 
just holding the intention of radiant light. And letting the light now fill your whole lower body, all the organs, the genitals, radiant light. And just feeling everything relax and release as it comes into the light. And then moving up into the abdomen, letting the light fill the stomach, the liver, and the pancreas, the spleen and gallbladder. Feeling everything relax, all the tension releasing, and the light is moving up into your chest, Filling your ribs, your heart, your lungs. Everything relaxing and releasing. And bringing your hands up, light through your left hand and fingers, letting it move up from your wrist to your elbow and your elbow to your shoulder. Feeling all the tension dissolving into the light. And then bringing the light to your right fingers and hand. And from your hand to your wrist, your wrist to your elbow. Just feeling all the tension go, filling with radiant light. And from your elbow to your shoulder, letting the light fill your shoulders. And then bringing your awareness to your back, starting from your buttocks, letting the light move all the way up your back. All the tension dissolving into the light. Bring an extra dose of light into your kidneys. And letting the light move up your neck, your throat, your jaw your cheeks and nose, ears, eyes, temple, the whole back of your skull, all the tension dissolving into radiant light. And bring your awareness again to your back, to the base of your spine, and experiencing the light move up your spine, inch by inch, bringing radiance to your whole spine, up through the crown of your head, and just bringing your awareness now to the breath. Breathing in, I am the pure self. Breathing out, I am radiantly healthy. Breathing in, I am the pure self. Breathing out, grace fills and surrenders me. Breathing in, breathing out, 
And with each breath, allowing yourself to go deeper, allowing your breath to expand. Breathing in, I am a pure self. Breathing out, grace. And if there's any place in your body where you have discomfort, or pain, or fear, bring your awareness there now. If you have more than one place, just bring your awareness to choose one area. And I'll, I'll breathe the light right into that area. Imagine. It's becoming completely radiant. And now taking a moment to breathe in the pure self. And breathe out grace, letting any fear Go. In fact, you can even breathe in any fear or grief you're experiencing and breathe out divine love. And notice what happens as you transmute the fear into love. And you can take a moment now, you can call on a master, an archangel, a spiritual guide, if you wish. And ask for guidance and support. And if there's a specific question, you can see, you can ask it right now. And just notice what answer you receive. You are always whole, pure, and radiant being of light. And you can come into this state whenever you wish and stay for as long as you want with each breath in and each breath out. You will always go deeper and deeper. And now just take a moment to imagine light everywhere in your home, just as if there's brilliant light. And then perhaps in your neighborhood or your city, You can see the light filling the whole United States as if you were looking at a map and seeing it light up. 
And you can imagine this light radiating everywhere on us. And when you are ready, you can very gently bring your awareness back to yourself, to the breath, and gently open your eyes and come back to the room. Wow, that was so powerful. Thank no, you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That was such a incredible way to, to kick off the weekend. So thank you guys so much. Um, before we all go, we have just one more special thing planned that we do at every event of ours. Um, at Moxie Made, we always want to celebrate courageousness. Um, we believe that fearlessness is always, I mean, fearlessness doesn't exist. There's always going to be self-doubt that accompanies us, but what matters are those moments that are really expansive for us. And so I would love everyone to take a moment that's with us and please close your eyes. And I want you to think about a moment this past week, this past month, that was particularly expansive for you. It was a moment that doesn't matter if it's big or small in anyone else's eyes, as long as it was meaningful to you. It was a moment that you pushed beyond some self-limiting beliefs and that you expanded yourself and you were extra loving yourself to yourself. It's a moment that you were proud of um, and Everyone think about that moment. Okay, open our eyes. And now this is a moment where we ask our community um, to share and so that we can take a moment to recognize you because we believe that courage has ripple effects in the community. And when you do something that is expansive for you, you give others permission to do it in their own life. So. Would love for all the women with us tonight to share their, their Moxie Made moment. Wow. When someone, Marina, quit her job today, and despite everything going on in the world, she is pursuing her passion in coaching, and she's so excited for the next chapter. That's incredible. Um, Nazi um, was also, it's her last day of being employed, and she decided to take this leap of faith and resign without securing another job, and she's so excited to see where she lands next. Montana is six months pregnant, and she's been, you know, scared to go to the doctor's office, but she put her fear aside, and she, she went ahead with the appointment. That's incredible. She's, Reza, um, Reza adopted a kitty which is amazing. I know I want to adopt a pet. <laughs> Turning off the news, that's so real. I can relate. I've been trying to filter myself. Ah, someone's a little 11th month old walked. <laughs> Someone um, postponed their wedding with the intention of keeping their loved ones and their community safe. It's incredible. Alexandra, um, after weeks of not being in a headspace too much physical activity, she felt like dancing and took two online dance classes. Someone's been meditating for six months every day. That's a huge accomplishment. A meaningful chat with a friend 
who had a different view of social distancing that definitely takes courage. Living in the now, yes. Hired a health coach. Enjoyed listening to my body's rhythms of sleep and food and movement. Mm, it's so important. Putting on a bra, yeah. This was the first time I got ready today. <laughs> Showered, put on a bra, makeup for you guys, totally can relate. Sang and play music. Distance running, wow. Surviving the last three weeks as a stay-at-home mom. I applaud all the mamas and parents out there. You guys are heroes. Taking time to pause every day and fresh air. Didn't let imposter, imposter syndrome get the best of me and submitted my first copywriting project early. That's incredible. Taken self-isolation to concentrate on meditation and art. Scared to offer yoga classes and to go outside of my comfort zone, but she did it. Continuing her yoga practice at home. Called it off with an awesome man. Yeah, good for you. Hanging in your worth. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, this was just such a powerful evening and thank you for being with us for our first virtual event. Um, if you're interested in more, we have an event next Thursday on small business support. Um, we've collected brand consultants and strategists to help us navigate these times. Um, we're also going to be launching locally, spreading through new local chapters. So if you're interested in helping bring Moxie Made to your community, send us an email. And then we're also launching digital office hours, which are Instagram TV, um, bite-sized mentorship sessions that are gonna be coming out every week. So thank you guys for such an amazing, a powerful evening. And thank you to our incredible speakers for making this possible. I'm so grateful. Thanks everyone, bye. Thank you guys.